I often get asked the same question. When's the right time to perform fire and gas mapping? Typically this is asked by project managers who are trying to decide whether it's worth doing fire and gas mapping in the feed stage of the project or whether it's better to leave it to detailed design. In this video we're going to look at both options in detail. First the traditional approach of leaving fire and gas mapping to the detailed design stage and second to understand what the benefits are of starting fire and gas mapping sooner at the feed stage. You may be thinking that fire and gas mapping is not possible at feed as typically you don't have a 3D CAD model at that stage in the project and Detect3D requires 3D CAD. Well, Detect3D can also be used with 2D AutoCAD files. I'm going to look at this in more detail in another video next week which will show you how to use Detect3D with these 2D CAD files. But in this video I'm going to really focus on whether feed is the right time for fire and gas mapping and my answer to this is based on talks with many people in the industry, many of our customers and users of Detect3D. And I'm not going to relay their opinions only, but also going to talk about how they're actually using Detect3D in their projects. You may be surprised to know that it's not all the same. Some companies do fire and gas mapping much earlier than others, and I'm going to talk about why this is. I have a graph here with a schematic representation of a typical project timeline on the x-axis through the main project phases of basic design, feed and detailed design. On the y-axis I have detector count and I'm going to look at why and when the detector count typically changes. Traditionally the initial estimate of detector count is made quite early in feed well before the fire and gas mapping actually starts, which is usually in the detailed design phase. The problem is that there's a huge discrepancy between the analysis techniques behind the initial estimate, which is usually nothing more complicated than a simple sketch, and the fire and gas mapping. This discrepancy inevitably leads to an increase in detector count soon after the fire and gas mapping has started, and our EPC customers tell us that over the past few years, this increase has continued as each design iteration results in an increased detector count. The problem here is twofold. First, the initial estimate is too optimistic because it's based on very, very simple techniques. Second, EPC companies have traditionally had to submit to black box results produced by the in-house software of fire and gas mapping consultancies and therefore have had little control over the rising detector counts and associated costs. These two problems are very, very common, and I hear them very consistently. In short, the traditional way that fire and gas mapping has been done over the past decade has been inefficient, expensive, and resulted in far too many detectors. With Detect3D, there's a new approach that's available to EPC projects whether the EPC performs a fire and gas mapping in-house or through a consultancy that offers Detect3D services. Instead of performing the fire and gas mapping at detailed design, more and more of our customers are now using Detect3D much earlier to arrive at the initial estimate of detect account. The reason for this is that you can greatly increase the accuracy of the initial estimation by loading in the 2D CAD into Detect3D and performing some fire and gas mapping as soon as the 2D CAD is available. To account for objects that may not yet be in the CAD file, such as pipework, we recommend that you increase the coverage target from, say, 90% 1 out of n to 95% 1 out of n, in anticipation of the obstructions created by the additional geometry. The crucial point is that even a very coarse fire and gas mapping study will result in a much more accurate initial estimate than any other technique. Of course, when the 3D CAD is available and you've used Detect3D through the project, you can simply unload the old geometry which was created from the 2D CAD, load in the new 3D CAD into the model, and keep all the detectors and zones in place, and resolve any problems with coverage using the various optimization techniques available to you in Detect3D. The important point here is that there's a consistency in the analysis techniques used for detector positioning throughout the project, 
So any increase in detector count in the detailed design phase is much less dramatic and much easier to handle. Techniques such as using the detector ranking tool in Detect3D and the upcoming optimization capability help to minimize any increases further. Detect3D also gives excellent visibility of the detector layout. Using the free viewing mode, project managers can review layouts produced by Detect3D for free. This further lowers the risk of unexpected costs and detector increases. In summary, the new approach of performing fire and gas mapping with Detect3D as soon as possible results in much greater control over detector counts and costs and reduces design time. This is, of course, a huge subject and requires much more detail than I can hope to go in on a single video. But hopefully this has been thought-provoking and I would welcome any comments that you may have. In the next week or so we'll release another newsletter which will demonstrate how to use Detect3D with 2D CAD files. In the meantime, good luck with your fire and gas mapping projects and thanks a lot for watching.